Right. The crowd is large and colorful. The players are from all over the United States and Canada. But these are not the only reasons why today's game is truly football's finest hour. All the proceeds from this game will go directly towards the 22 Shrine Hospitals for crippled and burned children throughout North America. The beautiful Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California. This is the 61st East West Shrine Classic, featuring some of America's outstanding college football seniors. <laughs> What a great day for a great game for an even greater cause. The 61st Annual East-West Shrine Game from Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto. A little bit fair because of the length of practice time. They've implemented these rules. We'll see those alignments, but the rules will be a little bit different. Okay, we'll remind you of those from time to time throughout the game. We believe that it will eventually make even more visible the great skills of our outstanding players. We're just moments away from the kickoff. We'll be right back after these messages. wide receiver from the Hawkeyes, Mike Siano of Syracuse, the other wide receiver, Steve Bradley of Indiana starts at quarterback. Behind him will be Maryland's Rick Fedanik, one of the running backs, and the other will be Gary James of LSU. And the kicker, both place kicker and punter, will be Brendan Tobin of Richmond, Western team. Here we go. Mike Wise, the right tackle from University of California, Davis. The nose guard will be Southern California's Mike Court. Boise State's Marcus Coates will be the left tackle. The linebackers on the outside, Beyon White of BYU, next to him on the inside from Kansas Willie Press, Joe Kelly of Washington, the other inside backer. And on the outside next to him will be Filippo Mokopisi of Utah. Mark Collins, Fullerton State's cornerback, will be at the one corner. Errol Tucker of Utah, the other corner. The free safety, Southern California's Jerome Tyler. The strong safety, Greg Laster of Arkansas. Uh, Bradley wasted no time at all, Ray, to go ahead and flip that ball in the air. And a good route by Boso that time. And he picked up good yardage and heavy traffic after he uh, fielded the football from Bradley. For the East, second and one, East 42-yard line. Wide receivers either side. That pick is about right. All right, Swanson left, Seattle right. Two and a half for a first down. Looks good. And, oh, he has the first down. Great sliding run by Jamie. Five, Joe Kelly almost bringing him down. Very live and touchdown, Gary James. So the Tigers of LSU are well represented on that touchdown drive, and Gary James gets the TD as Ravel Edwards, the head coach of the West, puts on. First, the West starting lineup, their offensive line. David Wright of BYU at left tackle. Keith Parts of California at left guard. Tom Ruiz of Utah State at center. Mike Hartmeyer of UCLA at right guard. John Barnes of Stanford at right tackle. But meanwhile, Bosco is starting despite a sore shoulder. And he completes his pass for, might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, to Reuben Mays. Now, the receivers and running backs, Reggie Bynum of Oregon State, the one wide receiver. Now keep your eye on Webster Slaughter of San Diego State. Bosco starts at quarterback. Gordon Brown of Tulsa, the one running back, and Reuben Mays of Washington State. And we'll have a lot more to tell you about those young men in a moment. Meanwhile, second and ten, Bosco, pretty good protection. Elected not to put it in the air and picks up about four. Third down five for the West, trailing seven nothing, and oh, it just got there in time for a first down. Webster Slaughter, and here's what the professional scouts say about Robbie Bosco, and as uh, you well know, Adrian, he just set a ton of records. Ray, I think in his career he's uh, either set or broken uh, 12 NCAA records, and he's really had a re remarkable and prosperous career at BYU. First and 10, West, their own 38, trailing 7 nothing. A good job of picking out 
about a third choice of receivers. Ruben Mays in this instance, and it's very close to it. Ohio State, the nose guard, John Hand of Alabama, the left tackle, the nose love him. Doug Landry of Louisiana Tech, one of the inside linebackers. John Offerdahl, the other from Western Michigan, first time that school's been represented in the uh, East-West game. It was a first down pass. Bosco to Mays, first and 10, West, their own 48. Little, uh, what do we call that? A sprint draw, a little delay. delay. Right, a little quick over yeah, the right on the left side, a little delay draw, and they didn't pick up a whole lot of yards. 13 plays, 68 yards, and it took 6.13 off the clock. Here are the rest of the defenders. Lance Hamilton, Penn State. Back live. Bradley getting pressure. Oh, that was almost picked off, and I think we may have our first third in about 25 at the West 32 yard line. 5.54 to play first quarter. East leading 7-0. He has a man there. Oh, it was almost picked off by Doug Havick. I believe, Ray, in his career that he's either broken or tied in a... Webster Slaughter is wide left. The pros like him very much. Just a second and eight. Good protection. Oh! When you realize that it is an all-star game and that some players haven't really played since maybe the middle of November, so... Uh, you know, what we try to do is not downgrade a player if he has a poor performance and not really try to Lucky. upgrade him too much if he has a good player. I don't think there's any question about him. He's got the size, the speed, and everything that you're looking for, plus a lot of intangible qualities that, that all that you're looking for in players. You compared him to your great art still, the all-pro with the Chiefs. And now we'll give it back up to Ray Scott. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. The punt by the West returned from around the East 5 out to about the 18-yard line. Great was the hands of tailback James. The West has great position. A new quarterback, Washington State's Mark Rippon, number 17. At the 42 of the East. The West trailing. Whoa! Is that a fumble? Early third, late third or early fourth. Making up for his size with strength, intelligence, and third down and 11. Rippon looking, looking, looking. He has a first down. 28-yard line of the East. Mark Rippon could find no one open, and he picks up a big first down for the out of California. With the West moving right to left, second and seven, 12-yard line of the East. Rippon looking and complete inside the 10, and that might be a first down. It is a first down at the fourth. Coming in untouched was linebacker bottom the 11. <laughs> Flag in the end. With that uh, first and goal opportunity, now they've got three yards to pick up, and uh, most good teams will pick that up very easily. From the two. Oh, fumble. And it is recovered by the... Whoa. Welcome to Hawaii, the site of the 40th Hula Bowl. Aloha, everybody. Today, 68 of the greatest collegiate football players in the nation have gathered for the East versus the West. And the greats have been here in the past, an honor roll including Lance Allward, Joe Montana, Bob Lilly, Merlin Olson, Dick Butkus, and Jim Puckett have all played in the Hula Bowl. And for this year's players, it has been a week of concentration. Teamwork has been the byword. Learning to hang ten and watching out for the deep pass, eye-hand coordination has been a key along the beach, working on those soft hands and trying to impress the coaches and the NFL scouts. Work, work, work has been the battle cry of these young collegians as they are preparing for today and the 40th. Second and 10, East, their own 25. He's thrown on the ball, he couldn't advance it, so it's wise, as you say, just to go ahead and cover the ball. Third and 12. This is James. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, second down, five. <laughs> Back back is Jim Everett. Well, Jim Everett's stock has really gone high in the latter stages of the year. He's big, he's strong, has all the qualities, and a great athlete. Now, again, back to the National Football League. All the scouts are here, and Sam will be doing throughout the game a scouting report just as the scouts are doing on these ball players. See how they're doing, how they'll be going in the draft. And they run a scale from one through nine. Eight or nine is an instant superstar. Seven or eight, he could be a starter. And six, he'll probably make a 45-man roster. And there's a lot of young men today looking to upgrade their status in the quickness, 
uh, position skills, uh, durability, and the intensity and the way they play the game side, and basically just two offensive formations. And the 40th hula ball is underway as Hilliard will, will down the ball about eight yards of the west because, you know, you keep wondering, say, is there a starting lineup? In reality, as Mike Norseth coming on that you saw number 19 is Doug Gaynor, and we'll take a look here with the offense, and these are the offensive players, and that is Northseth who, who will be starting. Uh, right six and 184 pounds, so he's a little fella, but he carries a, a, a big stick out there. Now it is fourth and inches, just short of the east 14-yard line, clock running, 1.15. This play right, and they either pick up that first down or get it in the end zone. I suspect we're going to see the play go for the first down and then try to get the score in the end zone. So they don't want to be 0 for 3, right? Those two men, uh, that young man Bosco and his elder, LaBelle Edwards, have certainly teamed up for some truly remarkable remarkable years at Brigham Young. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. Keep an eye out in the backers this time. All right, it's a sneak, and Bosco has the pop to the right is Slaughter. To the left is uh, Reggie Bynum. Bosco to the air. I would have to say that he made certain that would not be celebrating his 23rd birthday today, as is wide receiver Ron Brown of Colorado. All right, second down. A fine defensive play by Russell Hairston of Kentucky. Uh, that might have been to the end zone. Flag. Another flag. I'm not sure. Bosco. Bosco. Here's the play. Little timing pattern. We are back at the 40th Hula Bowl in Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. Here we go. Here we go. Work. Jim Everett, the quarterback. Split right. 64. Full back drag. On one. On one, right? And did he use hand signals? I didn't hear him. Did you hear him? They were in silent communication. <laughs> okay. East of the 14-yard line. First down. Oh! Everett from Purdue, and he'll open up going. And it is high, but it is complete. The 17-yard line. So it'll be second down and seven. After the they're going to no huddle offense. From a shotgun. Everett has time and he's going to run for it. Out of that cut, he comes to the 25 yard line, so he'll pick up eight and he'll have the first down. Matt Johnson was there. No, but those guys are going 100%. I think that hit on that punt return shows that where uh, the Danik just got his lights turned out. But down here now, I guess what I'm surprised at, you've got a, a quality runner like Ruben Mays, and yet they've thrown the ball now on three occasions and haven't been successful throwing out of the sun, so to speak, into that corner over there in the end zone. Kind of surprises me at least one out of those three plays that they didn't try Ruben Mays on some sort of counter. All right, now Cherry and Mays are the running backs. Fourth and goal, East two, fake. Will he run it in? He's going to run it in. He got it in. With two seconds left in the half, Bosco, the passer, becomes Bosco, the runner, on his not, 23rd birthday. Not only that, Ray, uh, you know, he did that with a, uh, basically a very sore shoulder. We're going to see it right here now. Straight to the corner, that little timing play, looking back to his right. He's covered. He waves him off. Now he's looking again. He's outside the color. Again, the instruction is go for it. And boy, what a tough job of running, Ray. Yeah. Quarterback, that's excellent running. Now Zendayas is going to try the extra point, except that the West was a man short. Now the full complement is there. And the West is on the board with two seconds left to play in the first half. After twice getting in the scoring position and coming away empty, the third time proves to be the chance. Play about Robbie Bosco. Adrian, will you comment on those? Uh, well, Robbie Bosco, they think maybe a late, uh, late third, early fourth round. Uh, above average arm, I'd go along with that for sure. Reads defense as well. We saw that uh, just on that last play. He is uh, suited very much for the pole style offense. Robbie Bosco in his career has thrown for 102 touchdown passes. So he's done a very good job. And he can also, as you just saw in that last play, run very tough when the occasion needs uh, when the occasion arises for that to be or for that to happen. So Robbie really has his, uh, has an opportunity as far as professional. And he is Mike. 
he got about a half a dozen. The back comes up, is going to put him in sync with his receivers. They're trying to throw the football upfield, but they're not having success on timing. The play action freezes the linebackers, and the pass is complete. In the 1986 NFL draft. Is that type of pressure quarterback like some of the scouts are looking for here? Without question. Particularly from the nose tackle position where now he's flanked by two guards and he doesn't have the uh, defensive ends who rush from an open... Quarter is Jim Everett. And Johnny. that goes Johnny Majors of Tennessee. And now the Western offense with Mike Norseth, the quarterback. And this is Dipkiss. And it is incomplete. Going to be... Norseth was going up for it, and also one of the offensive linemen, and nobody could pull it down, so it'll just go as an incomplete. Forgive us on the name pronunciation, but Sam and I have been working on them all week. Here's Norseth. Pretty good move. He goes deep as a man. and has the coverage for the heat. <laughs> Timing pattern into the corner and no, out of the end line. Meanwhile, on the sideline, James Hamrick is loosening up. We've seen him punt. Pressure, he tips away. And then goes out of bounds. He'll be out around the 18 yard line. North Seth is the holder. Bending left, no, he misses it to the left side. Pass, probably throw the football to the tight end. Down! What? Mm, that was Everett, he's in good way. Incomplete. That was a great pass, Griffin just couldn't hold on to it. Dusty Jackson was there. That's for his the teammate. Everett, five of eight for 32 yards. Oh, oh, almost picked up. But on top, his stock has really risen in the latter part of the year. Now, he hasn't come up with any big plays today, but as you look at the other side, Mike Norset might have helped himself today. Now we're going to go down to Bill McAtee talking to Dick Steinberg, Director of Player Personnel, the New England Patriots. All right, Sam, thank you very much, Dick. Your grades for Jim Everett. I'm going to run down the categories for you. Speed. Speed is a seven. Quickness. Quickness also a seven. Position skills. Position skills, eight. Durability. Durability based on what we know, you know, from the regular year, too, since he's only played a quarter here, would be a seven. <laughs> right, right, yeah. And intensity. Intensity would be a seven. Now, let me ask you something about your club. you got Julius Adams, who's going to retire. Do you have anybody in mind here you're looking at carefully? Well, of course, Leslie O'Neill and Tony Casillas would uh, would look pretty in trade uh, up. red, white, and blue. I'm, I'm afraid we would, yeah, but uh, you're always looking for a pass rusher in corners. All right, Dick Steinberg, thank you very much. Back upstairs. Thank you. The scrambling quarterback is Doug Gaynor, who's replaced Norseth in the 42 yards. Trying to break the scoreless tie. And it is good. And the West is out in front by a score of three. Gilbaugh, now the quarterback to the East. He fired high. It is intercepted. Kevin Wyatt from the University of Matt Court, the Southern California nose guard. It's going to be pump formation time, so the East is unable to take advantage of that pass interception, and this will be totally sink. They're just not able to get the football upfield. Yoba on inside handoff. Just wanted to uh, try to pooch it up high, let it hit the ground. He's going to go deep for Ron Brown. Right attempt. First of all, how's your shoulder? This is a 15 game. 
frustrating. It is a little sore right now, and uh, I'm talking to Coach Edwards right now whether I should go back in or not. You made a great run. Tell me about that play to end the first half. Well, you know, we were close to the goal line, and we are trying to get the ball in the end zone, and we had a pretty good rest. I rolled out and tried to get it in the best way I could. Honor Park just completed one shot, brought back up to Ray Scott. Good luck to you, Robbie Buck. Uh, thank you. Beautiful touch that time as Bynum, number 80, caught the pass from Rippon. And this is a dislocated shoulder and will not return. Now, I believe he dislocated it when he, when he laid the block on that scramble on the, uh, the missed extra point. It was just aggravated yeah. on the field goal attempt. It was shovel pass. That's, pretty, that's an incomplete pass. Incomplete. Oh, let's go, Bears. Two. Come on, Bears. Here we go now. Listen up, listen up. Shotgun left. 82 switch. On one, on one, right? Switch. <laughs> the old 82 switch play. 82 switch, it's got to be a pass pattern. Now, I would say he's going to go outside to throw a hook pattern to his outside receiver, Tony McGee. Goes to the tight end. Goes to Jeff. Steve, five. On one, on one, right? We'll just listen to him, here. It's a series that usually they go from 80 to 60 to change the protection. And it is back. I mean, he barks it out, doesn't he? Yes, he does, but he is really sailing his ball. He's not on target. He's not having a very good day. His ball is sailing, and he's not hitting some open receivers for first downs. Here is Dan Gilbert. Now, with those statistics that you're looking at, longest 64 average, 47.5. I mean, he's not a punter. He's a quarterback. I don't think he's going to be drafted as a punter either. <laughs> Scott Thomas on the return. The Gary James of LSU, the offensive player of the game, he receives the uh, William Coffin Award. The Jack Spalding Award went to John Hand. And as the players shake hands and the rival coaches prepare to shake hands, the 61st annual East-West Shrine game is the eye formation, and the quarterback's going to keep the ball coming back to his left. All even numbers are 2, 4, 6, 8 to the right, 3, 5, 7, 9 to the left. Northwest goes out at the 23, maybe the two-yard line. They're going to mark it down at the three. Third down and one. Dalton Hilliard leaning right at the goal line. He hits, he is hit, and then he tries to slide down underneath. Take the ball to Kyle Fuller, roll out and hit the tight end or the halfback. Keep it yourself and try, and he's going to come short. So North says, two targets in the game with Tony. And there it is. And being with Jim Everett, he plays, you know, just a short period of time. He goes deep. Good coverage. Good Excellent defensive Good. play by Carl Carter of Texas. One and ten back at the 22. Thomas Dindy and Doug Black are now oh. the set back. Everett to throw. He finishes, fires, and... Press. Coming out. All right. Yeah. 67, 87. Here we go. Here we go now. Let's just go. Shotgun right. Ball Shotgun man. right. 63. On one. On one. Ready? Yeah. Everybody's 0 for 5 63. in the second half. 5 for 14 in the game. Those were not. Down! What? Got to throw for a first down. It's there. Good defensive play, this time by counting. That is the time we yeah, he's probably calling him play. Okay, the East has the ball, trailing by 20 points, and the ball in their own 45 yard line. Go on top for a big play. Everett kind of fights his way out to the 48 yard line. Hey, 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 82! And he is on target to Tim McGee of Tennessee. That's the first one that he's hit today. That's been open all afternoon. And his ball has been sailing over the top. At the West 38, first down. Sideline pass to Thomas Denby of South Carolina. Carter, Mike Kinsey, James McKinney, Doug Judge, Scott Thomas, 
and Kevin Warren. Watch Napoleon Callum, number 30. He's going to be dragging now. Get him the ball, Jim. Two hundred. He was like, don't do it, son. I won. Because that does smart. Oh, yes. Down! What? Everett has pressure. He throws the pass. It's complete to Jimmy. BYU makes the stop. Trying to go no huddle offense right now because they want to uh, conserve time, try to get up on the board, and they call the time. Continues to lead 23 to 3 in the uh, Super Bowl. Nine, which is the highest grade you can get in scouting. Unless, of course, you're scouting Bill Derrick, and then it's a perfect job. And the East comes up. Well, it's late in the game, and it's the 20th game, so you can sort of do. Second, second. Oh, one, oh, one. Number 71 oh, one. is Jim Jeriga, the Ow! offensive guard. Hometown is Wheaton, Illinois, and that is the hometown, of course, of the great Red Wings. Corey McCallum. Like the right. right. And Jim also like played right. 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 We're scrambling in the backfield, and he got hit in the end zone as he was trying to get open as a receiver to get a two-point play. I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. Down! Everett has pressure. It's there as he makes it, and he does. Yeah. Jim Everett with the touchdown. Good job, you guys. Good way. Rambo for nine yards. Now let's get ready for the onside kick after the extra point try. Oh, and here he is again. Watch Jim now. He was trying to throw into the end zone for touchdown. And this is a six foot five, 210 pound quarterback. And this is what the pros like. Not the ability to run, but the ability to run away from the pass rush and make positive plays out of negative plays. Todd Solomon adds the point after in just a moment. Goes away from you, make sure you sit back and guarantee that the reverse is not coming back. Smell the play. Here's Everett, far side, pass is complete. Evans has stopped the clock, and now let's look at the most valuable player in the ballgame. For the offense, it is Doug Gainer of Long Beach State. For the defense, Rogers Alexander of Penn State. Cal State Long Beach, Doug Gainer. Penn State, Rogers Alexander. And both of these players rated around a 4.5 to a 5.5, somewhere in the middle of the pack coming into the game, so their ratings will go up for both of them, and they'll move up in the draft. No question about it. And Tom Miner, the scout from the Cleveland Browns, told me on Thursday that Doug Gaynor would be his sleeper. And Everett goes deep down the sideline, and it is... Yes, very happy young man. Congratulations, Doug. You better... Well deserved. Oh! Bob Greasy, nominated to the Hall of Fame this week. He played in the game. In the 40th Pillar Bowl, so the final once again, the West 23, the East 10 for Bill McAtee and Sam Martigliano. I'm Charlie Jones in the sunshine, in the islands. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody.